I'm not in the best of moods because, you know, hindsight is 2020, but when you're dead and you can't use your hindsight, it doesn't put you in the best of moods. And as I look back at Apple, some of the things that I see where I screwed up and I don't like to screw up is I see that there's a difference between a visionary thinker and a visionary leader. And I was much more of a visionary thinker. What's a visionary thinker? A visionary thinker defines reality. I define reality that if we could make a computer that was just simple and beautiful and fun, we would own the consumer market, and we did that. Uh, the next thing is you declare your intention. And so I could see that in my mind's eye and nothing got in my way. And I kept building it until it was insanely great. And the third thing is you decide on your strategy. So a visionary thinker defines reality, declares their intention, and decides strategy. Now here's the difference between a visionary thinker and a visionary leader. It's that last component. When you decide strategy, first time around, before I got fired, I didn't think of people as people. I thought of them as functions. I thought of them as appliances. And when an appliance isn't working, you're not very happy with it, and you don't treat it with respect. Well, when I came back, I was a little bit more humble. I had more of an appreciation for talent. I learned that when I picked up Pixar, and I learned to leave people like John Lasseter alone, because if I left them alone, they actually created great stuff. So when I came back to Apple, I kind of left people alone and sort of oversaw it. But the strategy that I didn't decide on and I didn't figure out is how to make whatever I was bringing to Apple sustainable. And so what happened, and I should have learned my lesson, when I was fired the first time, it lost its innovative, disruptive mojo, and I came back. And then when I came back, I kind of supplied it with that innovative, disruptive mojo. And I thought I assembled a great team with Tim Cook to run operations and the next chapter of Apple and Johnny Ive to do design, did amazing stuff. But what I failed to do, and I don't like failing, is I failed to make that visionary engine sustainable. And so they're having trouble innovating since I've been gone. And, and I took it to the grave with me. And yeah, I have this great legacy that they keep making movies about me and people sort of remember me. You know, it's kind of empty from where I'm sitting. And what I should have done was done something to increase the visionary engine, to, create, to make the visionary part of Apple sustainable. So here's what I realized, and if you want to pull the visionary in your company out. Part of what I realized about me, what made me, I guess, an effective visionary, except that I didn't leave it behind me for other people to do, is you need people who love the unknown. I love the unknown. Uh, I was drawn to it. You know, I had more of a joy of discovery than whatever I was discovering. It just called to me, and perfection called to me. Uh, when I discovered calligraphy, I loved design plus precision, and I brought that to all the products and made them easy. And so you need someone who has a joy of discovery, someone who loves the unknown, but you need someone who can also bring it back to a focus. When I was at Apple the first time before I got fired, I didn't do a very good job of that. Why? Because I didn't care about money, because at 24 I was worth a hundred plus million dollars. It didn't mean anything to me. I didn't really care about a team. I treated them all like functions, appliances. Steve Wozniak still loves me for some God knows reason. And, and what happened is uh, I, I didn't leave that intact. So if you're a company that depends on visionary 
innovation that's disruptive. Identify the person in your company who just loves the unknown. They, they need to be somewhat intelligent. They can't be stupid, but they love the unknown. They have an insatiable curiosity, and instead of being intimidated by the unknown, they are drawn to it like a magnet, but have someone who's able to sort of bring it back to focus. What happened is I was so drawn to the unknown when I was there before I was fired the first time, is anyone who tried to manage me found out that I was unmanageable. I was insufferable. Uh, from where I am, I would have fired me. Uh, I understand that. So if you're not the visionary, you don't have to be the visionary CEO. But find those people in your company that love the unknown, and it should be in your market. You know, if they love the unknown and it's not relevant to your market, it's kind of silly. But find people who just love the unknown and then can bring it back to a focus. Now, sometimes what you can do is you can, this is what brainstorming is. Brainstorming, you have all these people dump all these kind of ideas about your market and then you decide on that. But it really helps if you can find someone in your organization that embodies that. Because you can manage the brainstorming process and come to a conclusion, but it's different if someone loves it, if it's in their DNA. It was in my DNA, but stupidity was also in my DNA. And so I want Apple to be sustainable. I want that disruptive innovation to be something that gets carried on. And I want Tim Cook and Johnny Ive, if you can't do it, find a person that can, whether it's an apple, whether it's outside, but bring that back. I don't like failing. And as I said, if my legacy, I was this big icon and they keep writing things about me, it's kind of empty when you're where I'm sitting. So that you don't, so that you don't have the regrets that I do. Make sure that if you have a vis visionary, disruptive, innova innovative force in your company, make sure that's sustainable. Don't do what I did.